Welcome to lecture six, part one. Today we're going to be looking at the medical field, health, illness, healthcare, and we're going to be applying the conflict and structural functional perspectives. So let's dig right in and start with the structural functional perspective. The three assumptions of this perspective are stability, harmony, and evolution. The idea here is that any situation they're looking at, they're going to look at the institutions involved and ask what are the functions of these institutions. And we're looking at the the recognized functions and the unrecognized functions of these institutions. And then we're going to ask whether these functions contribute to stability and harmony and for the society as a whole. So we're going to look at the medical fields. What's their function, recognized and unrecognized, and does do these functions contribute to stability and harmony for society as a whole? What about illness? Does illness contribute to stability and harmony. And that raises the question. Illness impairs our ability to perform our roles. If we are a policeman, a teacher, a mother, a father, a sister, a brother, a student, being ill impairs our ability to, to do that thing. If too many people are unhealthy, society's functioning and stability suffer. This is from the author of our textbook. This implies that there's a certain amount of acceptable illness in society and there's a tipping point where illness becomes unacceptable. This is very important. And what I want to emphasize, and when I say emphasize, I mean this. You all pay attention to this one. This applies to everything we've been talking about this semester. Think about it. There's a certain amount of acceptable poverty, and then there's a tipping point. If you think about the Great Depression during the 1930s and 40s, there was a lot of people who were losing their homes and losing their jobs, and that was a tipping point. The government said, we need to change what we're doing. We need to create Social Security. We need to regulate business. We need to spend, uh, give money to, into the economy to boost jobs and things like that. The Great Depression was a tipping point. Again, let's use another example. This implies that there's a certain amount of acceptable crime. And there's a tipping point for crime, where crime becomes such a bad problem that now the government says, we need to do something about it. Wall Street and the corruption and the insider trading and all these things, for a while there was an acceptable amount of crime. But it seems to me like right now, this is a very important period of transition, where our society is going through a tipping point. Things are changing. They're saying we have to regulate these corporations. We need to cut down on insider trading. Everything I've been paying attention to in the news is saying we are going through a period of transformation when it comes to sort of executive white collar crime. So like I said, this idea of the tipping point and acceptable levels applies to many things and we sort of really see it with regard to illness. Let's talk about this idea of a tipping point. The structural functional approach focuses on society as a whole. The idea of a tipping point is similar to other concepts that you might have heard. What about a critical mass? Um, you might have heard that in something like a chemistry class or a physics class, but you also hear that in social sciences, where maybe a few people are doing something, and then you hit a critical mass of people, and suddenly it's an enormous thing, like a riot. What about a breaking point? Sort of the idea of, you know, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, and then it hits that point, and the thing ruptures and it breaks. What about a simple boiling point? Water is getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, but there's this point where water begins to boil. All of these things focus on system level change, and that's what we're talking about here. There's a certain amount of acceptable illness, and then there's a possibility of a tipping point or a critical mass. And what I'm asking you to do this week is think about that tipping point with regard to illness and disease. So the important questions and some of these questions we're sort of borrowing from the conflict perspective a little bit, is where do we draw the line? Who draws the line and what criteria do they use? How do we know when we hit that, that, that tipping point? Where is that line drawn and who's drawing it? What I want to emphasize again, the conflict approach would draw that line at a much lower level. Their threshold is not very high. If they have, you know, if, if Native Americans have very high alcoholism rate, or if Native Americans have very high high school dropout rates, they say, that's enough, let's do something about this. There's a group of people, and they've got a problem. The conflict approach is ready to change the world, and change how things work, if even sort of 
the, the little guys are suffering. The functional approach wants to draw that threshold or draw that line at a very different place. They won't, they won't say we've hit a tipping point unless it's very much affecting the whole society, but they draw that line at a very different place. So the conflict approach would say, who is drawing this line? Is it medical doctors that draw the line of when we have an epidemic, or is it politicians, or is it corporations, or is it community leaders? Who draws that line? What criteria are they using? And all of these system level changes have something to do with how the system is changing from one state to another, one character to another character. So we could talk about from equilibrium to disequilibrium, from stability to instability, from obscurity to sort of something being widespread or popular. If you think about sexually transmitted diseases, there might be, you know, 1% of the nation with a particular sexually transmitted disease. But then as it becomes more and more spread, widespread, it could go up to 30%. So we would say that the system has changed. That sexually transmitted disease was obscure, and it has become more widespread. Other ways we can think about the system changing is from safe to unsafe, functional to dysfunctional, or if we go back to the sort of physics chemistry example, think about something changing from a liquid to a solid. That's a pretty major change. If you really think about those, those critical masses and boiling points and break points. You know, water going to ice is really an amazing thing. Or a solid going to a liquid is, is really mind-boggling to me. And that's the type of system-level change we're talking about. So again, I would emphasize the conflict approach and the structural functional approach would draw the line for the, for the tipping point at very different places. The conflict approach Basically, if they see injustice, if they see people being treated poorly, if they see injustice, uh, inequality, they say, that's enough, let's change that. In a way, it's kind of like a canary in a coal mine. The conflict approach is saying, well, if this is happening to this group at this time, it might spread to other people, so let's take care of this problem now. The functionalists sort of say, nah, the canary died, but the canary was weak. If a couple of coal miners start to die, then we will do something about this thing. So this image that you should be looking at right now is an image that says tipping point, and it's got an image of the, the poor, the middle class, and the rich. Basically, where the structural functional approach draws the line is at the middle class, or at the white majority, or heterosexuals, but it's basically the mass of people. And the tipping point is when things hit that mass. So let me give you two examples of the tipping point where um, the middle class is sort of the center of the world. So here's two examples for you. The first one is something I already brought up, which is the idea that right now a lot of middle class Americans are losing their home, losing their jobs, and they don't know what to do with themselves. And right now, if you read newspapers, you're seeing, oh, this is a major problem. People are having, losing their homes, are being foreclosed. What are we going to do? The conflict approach would say, poor people have been losing their homes to foreclosure and losing their jobs and struggling to find jobs forever. And this is a problem of our society that they've wanted to change for a long time. Now, people are saying, oh, this is a big problem. But notice... It's happening to a different group. It's happening to the middle class. When it happens to the poor, it's acceptable for the vast majority of Americans. When it starts to happen to the middle class, it's, uh-oh, we better fix this thing. It's a problem. So do you see how the conflict approach and the structural functional approach have different thresholds? And the middle class in modern democracy plays a very, very central and important role. The other example I want to offer you, sort of a different example of the tipping point, is um, marijuana usage. In the past, I'm um, talking prior to the 1950s, marijuana was used by very, very few people. Um, it was not widespread. It was rather obscure. Jazz musicians would smoke it. Maybe you'd get some outlaw bikers smoking marijuana along the southwest of the United States. People who sort of went back and forth to Mexico might be smoking a little bit of marijuana, but it wasn't as widespread as it is today. They didn't have lots of Hollywood movies with you know, famous actors smoking marijuana, making jokes. They didn't have a television show like the 70s show where kids are smoking weed. 
Well, during the 1960s, middle-class white Americans started smoking marijuana. Prior to that group smoking marijuana, marijuana was a criminal offense. You could be arrested for having marijuana on your person. During the 1960s, the middle-class white young kids started smoking marijuana. It was at that point that marijuana was decriminalized in many states, not all, many. And that's where we start to see sort of the, 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 the less tough uh, law enforcement of marijuana. What happened? Well, I'm simplifying it, but a lot of middle-class white kids started getting busted for smoking weed. And they'd get in trouble, just like, you know, the jazz musicians were and the bikers and people like that. And their parents would say, oh, my little Johnny got arrested for smoking marijuana. And the parents of the middle class would call up their state senators, call up their sheriff, call up their mayor, call up anybody they could and say, my little Johnny's a good kid. He smoked one little marijuana cigarette. Let him go home. But this was happening all over America. Parents were putting pressure on lawmakers, saying, my kid's not a bad kid. You've got it all wrong. He's hanging out with the bad kids, but he's a good kid in general. This shouldn't ruin the rest of his life because he smokes some marijuana. And we start seeing the widespread change of marijuana laws across America. Again, when it's the outlaw, when it's the marginalized groups smoking marijuana, it's a crime. And the reason it's a crime is because it was those groups smoking marijuana. Once it starts to cross over to the middle class, we start seeing um, more lenient... Um, law enforcement of it, and the laws are changing. If you think about it today, California put it on the ballot saying, should we legalize marijuana for recreational use? There's so many white middle-class kids smoking marijuana that they are saying, hey, you know what, let's just make this thing legal in this state. So again, this is a tipping point. The system is changing, and the 1960s was a system change for marijuana law. Right now, we're sort of saying it's a system change for, for home foreclosures and, and uh, loss of jobs because the middle class is losing their jobs. The middle class is very, very important, and being white is kind of important too in America. So what we're going to do now is I want you to watch two film clips of a movie called And the Band Played On. I cannot tell you enough of how much I like this movie um, as a sociologist. Um, it's just a phenomenal movie. And it basically tells the story of AIDS, HIV, being discovered. They didn't know what it was when it first started to kill people. They thought it might be a form of cancer, uh, like gay cancer, or homosexual cancer. Um, there's a lot of different med um, medical doctors debating what is HIV, what is AIDS. And the movie and the band played on follows a group of um, medical doctors and epidemiologists, epidemiologists, um, basically study different rates of um, disease among different groups. Very sociological thing to do. And these guys were basically trying to track AIDS, figure out who had it, why they had it, how they got it. And the movie tells the story of these medical doctors and epidemiologists trying to create a tipping point, trying to say, let's change the world. There's a problem, it's HIV, it's AIDS, it's killing people, let's do things differently. And a lot of people resisted that change. They said, no, we can't do that. We need stability, we need harmony, and this is going to disrupt everything, and it's only affecting a small group of people. So as you watch the clips, I want you to consider the idea that the people who are seeking change now, saying, you know, thousands of people have died, they're sort of like the conflict theorists. They're saying there's a group, it's marginalized, um, they're homosexuals. They're dying. We don't know why they're dying. We need to do something about this. And the other folks are saying, no, 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 we're not going to do anything about it. Um, we haven't reached a tipping point. The other, the other people in the, in the clips, you could look at them as structural functionalists because they more or less are saying, no, we haven't hit that tipping point. That tipping, that threshold is much higher than this. And you should watch the films and I hope you enjoy them. <laughs> 